Washington Youth Academy uh, cadets have joined us. I am going to ask for Amy Steinhilber, uh, who is the director, to please come forward. And I'm not quite sure how you want to introduce the cadets to us, uh, but we do like talking to young people. Yes, ma'am. I understand that you wanted us to answer some questions first, and then I'll be happy to introduce our, our most proud, uh, stellar young adults behind me. Um, Madam Chair, and for the record, my name is Amy Steinhilber, the director of the Washington Youth Academy, and today I've also brought our principal, Rick Brownell, with me. In order to talk to you about how we use competency and mastery-based learning at the Academy, I feel it's uh, my duty to first set the scene for you. So I will talk to you about the Washington Youth Academy first a little bit to set the scene. A National Guard Youth Challenge program in partnership with the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction is our state's premier academic and life coping skill intervention um, for 16 to 18 year old teens. A military style academy, we annually receive more youth applications at our sole campus in Bremerton than we have room to serve. Chief among our eligibility criteria is that youth volunteer. Um, they cannot be court ordered or in any way made to attend. Indeed, they volunteer to participate in this 17 and a half month long program so that from the very beginning they're empowered uh, to take ownership of their self-improvement and specifically their education and character development. Their adventure begins at our campus where their families gracefully bring them to us to live for five and a half months there during the first phase of our program called the residential program, our residential phase. Here they're immersed in a highly disciplined, safe and professional learning environment where they are devoid of distractions that are common among teens today. So minus their cell phones, their social media, their daily telephones and other, um, uh, their da daily television and other flat screen distractions, they're also introduced to a healthier lifestyle through nut nutrition, a fitness regime, eight uninterrupted hours of sleep a night, and a regular daily and weekly schedule. They develop positive peer groups, work together with our staff team, and are matched with adult volunteer mentors from their hometown communities across the state. Put simply, they build resiliency through right relationships, and that empowers them to improve their education and employment potential and become responsible, productive members of our community statewide. So while in residence, our cadets develop and improve their mastery through experiential learning in eight core components, and that is a trademark of the 41 uh, challenge programs nationwide. And these are leadership followership, responsible citizenship, health and hygiene, physical fitness, service to community, life coping skills, job skills, and of course, academic excellence. In, set, in fact, in just the five and a half months residential phase, they can earn up to eight high school credits, the equivalent of one in about a third year of traditional school settings. Uh, the credits that they earn are in English, math, science, <clears throat> video production, robotics, contemporary world issues, career exploration, community service, health and life management, personal fitness and personal finance but they don't stop there. Uh, each cadet also develops an action plan that they will employ with the help of their adult volunteer mentor back at home during the year that follows their completion on campus, which is the post-residential phase. If you've heard of our success stories and read the numerous studies uh, from RAND, you know that our performance and outcomes are good and it works. With 2,879 graduates to date, Staff are able to leverage the professional relationships they form, forge with the cadets to help them keep their commitment. And we have an 83% success rate uh, of students who come to the academy decide to stay. Again, it's voluntary. Um, additionally, our alumni are out in their communities doing great things. 89% um, of our graduates are out in, and staying productive in school, work, and voluntary service at the six month mark, and 78% at the 12 month mark. So the Academy incorporates competency and mastery-based learning to reach all students equitably. And the reason I say that is because to paint a picture, our student body are coming to us from a diverse variety of demographics. They're coming to us from all across the state, albeit a little bit uh, less from the far, farther eastern side. Um, they identify across the gender spectrum, uh, ages 16 to 18 and reading skills 
ranging from the fifth grade to the 10th grade levels, uh, math levels from seventh to 10th grade aptitudes. Uh, we have anywhere from 15 to 25% of each class cohort of our students arriving with an IEP or a 504 plan. And many of our students come from homes where English is not the primary language spoken. Our average student demographics for ethnicity compares very closely with the state's demographics. And finally, and possibly the most significant, many of our students share that they have experienced four or more adverse childhood experiences, which as trauma-informed literature will tell you, uh, makes it even more important that we're meeting them where they are. And so to set reasonable expectations and provide uh, differentiated instruction both in and outside of the classroom. So understanding then that we are pretty much the modern day equivalent of a one room schoolhouse, uh, you'll understand how second nature it becomes for us to adapt our training and education around youth in the best possible way to provide them hope and a pathway to their next steps beyond our doors, both educationally and vocationally. Our structured environment kind of helps us do that a little bit easier. Uh, again, I mentioned the lack of distractions but also cadets are provided a two week acclimation phase when they first arrive so that uh, we set the stage uh, before entering the academic instruction in the third week. And we do that with written and explained uh, expectations for success and also a clear picture demonstrated through the 75 plus staff that surround them and role model. Um, they have smaller classroom ratios and teaching staff through our partner and a teaching staff through our partnership with the Bremerton School District, led of course by our principal here who I've brought with me today. Not only do teachers use formative assessments regularly inside the classroom, but the larger staff group uh, actually including the uniformed cadre, our counselors, youth mentor advocates, health center team even. Uh, meet weekly to discuss positive growth and areas of need that they've observed in each of our cadets. So Amy, this, I'm going to interrupt you right yes, here just because um, I want to again make sure that we get a chance to have absolutely an, uh, interaction with your uh, cadets. Um, appreciate your bringing the principal. I also see uh, some of the staff. I see Commander back there. Thank you so much for for joining us. Um, um, I, I, I will just interject here. A lot of what Amy was talking about, um, it's hard to appreciate unless you're actually at the Washington Youth Academy and you get to actually observe it. So please understand you're not going to be able to fully get the full impact uh, either by um, Amy's description or um, um, even by uh, any other conversations. I'm wondering, however, if you or the principal would like to uh, qu quickly uh, have us um, hear directly from the cadets. Uh, if you had some guided questions for them already, um, I think we are most interested in knowing um, why is this particular model um, so effective for these cadets and why a perhaps a more traditional model did not. Um, but we do know that a good portion of this is the number of caring adults that um, these young people are now surrounded by. So, Principal, yeah. would you like to facilitate the... Thank you for your time this morning. We're going to introduce our cadets. Come on up. My name is Sebastian Garcia. I'm from Pasco, Washington. I attended Pas Pasco High before I came here. My name is Cadet Fields. Uh, I come from University Place. Uh, Curtis High School is where I go, but I'm transferring over to Piaf High School because my family moved over. And my name is Cadet Sturgeon. I live in Bothell. I go to Bothell High School. So uh, are you, uh, is this, are you in the first phase, the residential phase? Is that, okay. Yeah. And then when you're done, you will, your post-residential phase, you will return to the high schools you just identified. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So uh, why don't you explain to us why the Youth Academy was attractive to you and to your family and how it is um, making a difference that uh, the traditional uh, setup uh, might not have worked as well for you. 
beautiful. Uh, for me, ma'am, it's definitely the. <laughs> it's definitely the structure, because uh, in my regular high school, there's there's really no structure. Um, I go to school, I, I barely talk with anybody, and I can just do whatever I want pretty much. But with the academy, there's like a set plan for what I'm doing daily, and that really helps me because uh, I, I don't really, I, I just need help with structure overall. So, so thank you. Good. You want to go ahead? Um, what attracted me about the academy, uh, well, how I got introduced to the academy was by my counselor. She explained to my parents what it was because I was credit deficient, and I read about it and, like, um, learned a little bit to see, like, if that would be something I would be interested in doing. And my dad recommended it. Like, he, he really wanted me to go. And then I just thought about it. And I was like, you know what, why not? And so I started attending this academy. And right off the bat, um, I, I, I loved it. Just the structure and uh, the time that I had with the cadre and being able to focus in a classroom setting without interruptions from my phone or, like, not even wanting to listen because I, I have to listen and I have to ha I have to want it and I, I do and so that's basically uh, thank you yes ma'am um what at least for me what really works for the Academy is that they don't hand anything to you you have to put in the work to get something out of it and that's what really helps me because back at my high school, it's like you could do the bare minimum and not do very much, and they'll still like pass you along. And it's just, it really helps me that I have to actively participate and do things to be successful. Thank you. Um, I do see that you're joined by several of your colleagues, and because we're um, starting to run short of time, what I'm going to ask uh, from each of the rest of you, would you please introduce yourself, introduce your home high school, um, and if you could uh, perhaps elaborate a little bit more on uh, the idea that um, Mr. Sturgeon, is that your name? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, offered uh, in terms of what is it that is expected of you or what is it that you're getting at the Youth Academy that you didn't get in your home high school. So, please. Um, my name is Cadet Morrison. I, my home high school is Henry Brown. Um, going off of what Sturgeon had said about what the, what you have to do in order to get um, another thing I would like to put in is the way our cadre works with us. We work a lot with the cadre on how we can really and before, you know, I was kind of that one person who just didn't want to, wanted to stay being my mentor thought that that would be the better way to go. But when I realized that there's so much more when you are able to connect with people, that better opportunity stronger will to want to do more to succeed for you. Eisenhower High School and Yes Mona. Part of the Academy that I appreciate. Academy has really opened my eyes up to all of the options I have in life. The resources I have available And my future really step by step to make a plan on how I'm gonna get there. And I have all my cadre and staff that out and be the Hi, my name is Cadet Shumway. Um, I'm from Tacoma and I originally attended Spanaway Lake High School. Um, one thing I can say is that the Academy mainly helped me with is the um, 
structure of how they could set you up outside of the academy. Um, during high school, it's you graduate high school and you move on with life. They don't have any contact with you anymore. During this academy, we're here for the um, residential phase, then it's post-residential phase. Um, and during that post-residential phase, they're always in contact with you, making sure you're okay, making sure you have the things that you need to be successful in your life. And I, I'm really, we're getting close to the end right now, and I'm really excited to move on from this and become a better person and s still stay in contact with these um, amazing staff that um, we've been able to grow with uh, as people and um, being able to talk with them every day and um, experience things with them that we never could have, um, you know, going to a, a traditional high school. And so I'd say the, um, the love and structure of this place is mainly what has stuck with me personally. My name is Cadet Ross. I'm from Lake Stevens. Um, I go to Lake Stevens High School. So for me, kind of building off of what Shumway said, I think that the biggest impact for me has been having an environment that forces me to get out of my shell and build my confidence. Like being able to stand in front of people and speak or being able to, I guess, be yourself around a large group of people that that's not something that I would have done before the academy, and that's something that's kind of been taught to me and like forced upon me at the academy, but in a good way, I guess. <laughs> and it's and it's really nice to be able to to have that those adults and also peers our own age that we can be around, that we don't really have to worry about how they view us or what they think about us that we might have had to worry about back home and we can kind of do what we want to do and work towards our own futures instead of working towards what was happening in the moment back home. Uh, my name is Zanai Nars and I'm from Yakima, Washington. I attend Davis High School. Um, and something I've learned from the Washington Youth Academy is like how to manage my time because I would procrastinate a lot before I attended the Washington Youth Academy, and now I like built a struct, like a schedule for myself, and everyone has a schedule, and we go off that schedule. And I, I'm just more. I just know how to manage my time better, and that was something I really struggled on before coming to the academy, and I, I'm now more organized. I know how to talk more to people. I struggled. I was more like um, could it Ross. I was really shy, and now now that I live like with 45 girls, it's kind of hard because everyone has different personalities. But we all adjust throughout the weeks um, through acclimation phase. But I'm really glad I had the opportunity to kind of. Washington Youth Academy. Cadet Dylan Cruz. I'm from, I live in Rochester, Washington. Northern Mariana Islands. It taught me a lot. Um, I've gained valuable knowledge and experience. Kind of go there um, more than what you expect from like being in academy. A lot of us we come here for the eight credits, but we get more than just the eight credits. Build relationships, build our character, my character, um, self growth. That's a big I've gotten from the academy. <laughs> so, uh, if, would you like to wrap us up? We do have a, a committee that's coming in, and uh, but we do want to hear from you. My name is Justin Allen. I'm from Vancouver, Washington. I attend Perry High School. 
Uh, one of the biggest things I take from the academy and I'm very grateful for is the uh, just how much the college I do care and how much they work with you through everything. Uh, the life coping skills I've been given. There's been situations where I've had the hard times because I have family stuff going on back home that I found out about and it was I was a wreck because of it and they helped me through it and made me a better person. I learned from those situations. Um, I've gained self-confidence. I, I used to be nervous. I wouldn't really jump out and like volunteer to do things, but now I, I feel like I can take on any task just from what I've been taught in the past four months. Thank you all very much, and I apologize that we've had to cut uh, you short. Um, that was not our intention, but um, we are uh, very grateful not only that you uh, made the trek here to share your stories with us, um, we wish you continued success in uh, your future. With that, the House Education Committee is adjourned.